Hey everybody, welcome back. Conroe's Boston Line. Um, I got a quick video for you. I finally figured out how to track trains on Panel Pro uh, so that as it moves around the layout, you can track it like this. So let's just uh, 6657 is sitting up here at State Line. And let's just assume that it's now moving and occupies the block. Now it pops up here, 6657. I gotta play with the margins a little bit. But as it moves, goes around, here it is, 6657. It's now in Pittsfield, and as it uh, comes out of the blocks, it will also take it off and move it around the layout. So right now I have it all the way to CP107, which is Westfield right here and I'm just going to show you how to build it and continue see over here just the blocks just unoccupied there there uh, so let me show you how to set it up okay so the first step you need to do is make sure that your entire railroad or at least your main line is connected with blocks so if you have any sections of track that when you light up a block like this, this red, if there's a section of track that doesn't light up, as the, as the tag moves with the blocks, it needs to connect to the next block. So actually, I'm looking on the panel right here. It looks like I have a section of track. Let me light this up. Oh no, it does light up. But anyway, if you have a section of track that doesn't light up, um, it won't, JMRI won't be able to follow the tag block to block as soon as there's a break it'll no longer go so that's the first thing you have to do um, there's videos on that building blocks so make sure your entire main line is blocked and connected so once your main line is totally connected you have no more gaps between your blocks the red line will connect even through switches uh, your next step is going to be dropping block contents and it's essentially the label that the train number is going to pop up on so this is how you're going to do that once you have everything set up you're going to come up here to block contents and if you look all of your blocks are listed here right so in my case i'm going to work on i have block contents all the way up here to CP 107 so I am gonna work on this block here in Westfield between 107 and 105 so you're gonna come up here to block contents the name of this block is Westfield eastbound so you're gonna select that make sure it's highlighted then you're gonna hit shift left click like you're dropping a label or a signal or anything else and it has now dropped it on the panel problem is you can't see it so you're gonna click left click and drag like this and you're gonna highlight it now you see how it popped up right there that little tiny square that is your label it's kind of silly but now you know where it is it's sitting right there so you can put your mouse over it you can right click. Now here is your black block contents icon. And you can come down here to properties. And you can now begin to change the appearance of it. So in my case, I want the font to be a size 10. I want the font color to be blue because obviously it needs to be blue. You can give it a border if you want. There's a couple different options you can do. Um, when you're done, you're gonna hit apply. Okay. Now you can kind of see it now, it's in black. So now you can click, you can right click and move this just like you would any other label on your panel. And if I did this correctly, it should be ready to go. All right, once you have your labels up and you have a couple blocks tied together with labels, um, we're going to actually assign a train number to one of our occupied blocks. So right here, 
State Line Track 2. There's a train sitting there. There's no label on it. So we're going to now define what that train is in JMRI. So we're going to go to Tools, Tables, down here to Blocks. We're going to find that block, which for me is State Line Side 1. We're going to make sure that it's occupied, because it has to be occupied in order to get a train number. And I'm going to type in the lead loco, 5544. I'm going to hit tab so that it's now gives it a value. And we're going to X out. And here it is on the panel, 5544. I'll throw the switch. Now it's got a green light. It's now moving into tunnel. There's the label. It's now moving into Pittsfield. The label. Hinsdale. The label. Westfield. The label. And the Helix. The label. And then as the train moves, no more label. 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 Just like that. But now, look, if I occupy the the block again, there's no train there because JMRI no longer knows what train is there. So even though the train hasn't moved, I'm, I'm just manipulating it. Um, that's how you have to start with a label is on an occupied block and make sure all the blocks connect. You could do that by highlighting or turning on all of your blocks like this. I add little sensor buttons so that I can Turn all the sensors on, see? So I know I have a solid red line. I mean, these are switches, so those are okay, but solid red line all the way around. So all I have to do is drop those labels and JMRI should follow the train uh, all the way around the railroad. So I hope this helps, guys. Have fun. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments section. Oh, one more thing, something that'll help you guys out um, over here in your sensors tab. If your rolling stock doesn't have resistors and it's only your engines, um, what you want to do is add a delay to your blocks so that when the trains are going between blocks, you're not getting misreadings back and forth where JMRI is detecting the train, not detecting the train, detecting the train. You want it to be smooth. So what I do is I add a delay um, right here in their sensors, go to defaults, global debounce delays. You can set a delay to activate a block, meaning when the train actually goes into that block, you can set a delay before JMRI reads it. Or what I do is I set a delay to inactive so that as a train leaves a block, it stays active for a certain amount of time. So for instance, if your locomotives are the ones the railroad is detecting, those locomotives leave the block. If you do not have a delay, that block is now gonna go to unoccupied, right? But your train is still in the block. So I add a 20, uh, 20,000 millisecond delay, which is 20 seconds. Uh, and that gives me a 20 second window for the train to exit. So I, I have some resistors in, in wheels uh, scattered around the layout, but that 20 seconds, it, it keeps everything occupied it, and it kind of slows things down and kind of spreads things out. Um, so, and then you come over here, once you have that default delay set to 20,000 milliseconds, there's this little tab here, um, use global delays, and you're just gonna check your blocks, your sensors, which sensors you want to use that delay. Um, so be careful because like me with NCE, I also have tortoises hooked up. So I do not want delays on those tortoises because when I throw a switch, I want the railroad to know, I want JMRI to know that that switch was thrown immediately. I don't want it to know 20 seconds after it threw. Uh, but with the blocks, 
I want the blocks to stay active for 20 seconds so that the train can move along the railroad into the next block. Kind of keeps things fluid. Um, so yeah, so you're just going to check your blocks that you want to use. So I hope that helps. Um, definitely help me. And uh, good luck. Bye.